the racetrack that has nurtured all our international champions, and Formula Ford, the single-seater racing class where they've learnt their skills, will be dropping in on the Ford of Ireland series to savour club racing at its very best and to see if we can spot a future champion, young men like Chris Paul. Chris, you're having a great year. Well, I'm very good at Kyrgyzstan at the minute. I've won four out of four races and uh, Mandela have had a couple of troubled events, but we're still in it. It's very close at the minute and uh, for the next few events, I think it's uh, a lot of people can actually score points and uh, be well up in the championship. It's a busy weekend for you, this. Yeah, well, we were Kyrgyzstan yesterday. Uh, had a good win there for the River Rock team and had to work late last night and down late last night. But we're here and we're in reasonably good shape, so we'll get out there and see what we can do. Mark O'Connor is Chris's main opposition. You've been having a good season, Mark. Yes, so far so good. Uh, we had two wins and the last day out, we had a slight mishap with Chris Paul and ended up finishing fifth. So hopefully today I can get my own back on Chris since the two of us now are on the front row. Derek Keneally, you're driving one of the Swift chassis. Now, they're very successful at the moment in England. They are very successful in England at the moment. Uh, Johnny Kane is leading, currently leading the British Championship in one. Um, and I'm currently leading the championship here in Ireland in it, so it seems to be a very good chassis and I'm glad that I have one for this, this year. Formula Ford, fast and furious as ever, is it? It is indeed, it's very, very close this year. I think it's, this is one of the closest years we've ever had in Formula Ford. There's very little in, there's about six of us at the top and there's absolutely very little in it, so it's so close. Michael, it looks like there's a little extra ballast there that shouldn't be there. Yeah, I started off and I went out of the pit lane and found out that I had no clutch, so I tried my best on the way around just to, to struggle around and try and get a half a decent, decent grid position. But um, whenever I was coming down into the fast right hand or third gear, the throttle jammed open on me. So whenever um, I tried to get around, it just was going too hard at the time. And that was it, my full 316 into the grass. And that, that was my practice over. Mickey Potterton, how's your year been going? Well, it's not too bad. I've had a few thirds and a few fourths. And we just started getting the car really working properly now. So hopefully today we'll have our first win now. Sean, this is, what, your fourth season in Formula 4? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Been going okay this year, but we first couple of races basically sorting out the chassis, because it's a new chassis. And uh, then from then we've just had terrible trouble with engines, so hopefully today we're sorted again now. The elegant Ford Probe leads the capacity field round their final corner of the warm-up lap as they head towards the grid. And in pole position is going to be that man who was so successful yesterday, number six Chris Paul in his Van Diemen. Alongside him, also in a Van Diemen, Mark O'Connor. And then moving on to the second row, we have the first of the Swift cars, number 44 there, that's Noel Dunn. Alongside him, number 19, Mark McKenna from Swords in his Swift. And then number two, that's Nicky Potterton in his Van Diemen. Number 15 is George McAlpine in his new Van Diemen. Then the first of the Reynards, number four, Colin Barrable. And then number three, that's Derek Keneally in his Swift. 41, another one of the Reynards, an absolute veteran by these standards, that's Dennis Sheehan. And number four there is Sean McGill in his 93 Swift. So those are the main runners in this capacity field. 15 laps lie ahead in the Ford of Ireland. A Formula Ford race and a beautiful start from the outside of the front row by Mark O'Connor. Going across the bars of Pullman, who tries to take it back around the outside there. Absolute traffic jam. Dennis Sheehan involved in something. That it looked like Sean McGill on the outside. Sheehan's got going, but he's lost his nose cone. We see it again. Sean McGill swiveling round. The front suspension gone on the Swift, and I'm afraid a very, very short race indeed for the Dubliner. So Dennis Sheehan may have lost his nose cone and uh, obviously a little bit of his pride, but the car that is badly damaged is the Swift there of Sean McGill, who abandons after just one corner. Meanwhile, out front, Mark O'Connor has pulled out a few car lengths over his great adversary, Chris Paul, as the rest of the field streamed through. You can see the little old Crosley 30F at the very back of the field.
Neal there, and number 16 just going through picture, Gary Graham. O'Connor it is, on opposite lock as he comes up towards Dunlop for the first time. In second place, number six, Chris Paul, and Noel Dunn. Then we have number two, Nicky Potterton, as the rest stream through. Number three there, that was Derek Keneally and his Swift. Down they come to complete the first lap, and it's a great battle developing there for third place. Meanwhile, O'Connor really trying to make the break, both first and second place, and then actually locking wheels on the braking as they all get safely through this time. There's Sheen without the nose cone, just going through picture. O'Connor really trying hard, head crouched forward. Chris Paul still in second place. Noel Dunn, Nicky Potterton then right behind him. And then we have number 19. That's uh, Mark McKenna from Swords and his Swift. Nicky Potterton there, the DHL car, really putting big, big pressure on the Viking-sponsored car in uh, third place there. Noel Dunn just glancing in his mirror as he comes up the hill to Dunlop that time. It's a blind corner, they touch that time. Potterton right onto the gearbox of the Swift as they head down the straight. Meanwhile, Mark O'Connor has made a bit of a break. Uh, he's getting away slightly, but look at this. Potterton down the inside, going into third place. A beautiful maneuver. So Nicky Potterton takes third place from Noel Dunn. And can he hold it? That's the question. Dunn fighting back as they come down towards the double apex Bridgestone Bend. It's a tremendous, typical Formula Ford five-car duel there for third place as the first two begin to build a gap and move away. And this is often what happens in racing because you see these people are fighting so hard that they're actually getting entangled in themselves, whereas the first two can take clean lines and the quickest lines and really move away. Potter is still in third. Don Dunn is still in fourth place. It looked like 19. Mark McKenna in fifth place. It is indeed. And then we have number three, Derek Keneally from Selbridge in his Swift. A lot of these boys, uh, sons of famous racing fathers, number 44, Don, it applies to him, it applies to number 19, uh, Mark McKenna, and indeed it applies to Derek Keneally. And look at this, Potterton, really not having time hardly to glance in his mirrors, and right behind them is George McAlpine making up uh, the rear of that track. There's Raymond Knox, uh, the ex-rally driver, and number 71 getting a little bit to wide there. There was Colum Hayes from Cork and his Reynard. Up front, if anything this time, Chris Paul in the River Rock car is closing in a little bit. Still this glorious battle goes on for third place. No change actually in the position, but uh, it's very, very close as they tuck in behind each other to get maximum effect from the slipstream. Noel Dunn trying the outside, that's a little bit ambitious. Gets a little bit side, but he's trying to come across the bars, but Nicky Potterton has it well covered. These two have made a very slight gap now uh, amongst the other three in this group. So Nicky Potterton, but it really is negligible. There we have uh, George McAlpine, won uh, the Phoenix Park a couple of years ago. Meanwhile, out front, still no change there. Still Nicky Potterton is in third. Still we have Noel Dunn, number 44, there in fourth place. The Swift cars, originally designed in America, now very, very successful in English racing, uh, and taking over Van Diemen's crown, really, across the water at the moment. That's a Swift also there, number 19, uh, Mark McKenna whose father has raced for many years in Formula Ford, indeed does still race from time to time. Nicky Potterton looking from one mirror to the other. Where have they gone? And they're right behind them. And under big, big, big pressure now. Number 19 there, Mark McKenna. From number three, Derek Keneally, whose father was also a Formula Ford racer. And that time, uh, second place man Chris Paul had virtually two wheels locked up under braking. George McAlpine in the Miller car now getting a bit frustrated at the back of this train. But there's no faulting Mark O'Connor in the Marks Models car. He's just driving perfectly, but he's having to drive right on the limit to stay ahead of this very successful driver behind him. He's using all the road, a little bit of the curbs at times. But he certainly has had a faultless drive so far. From the outside of the front row, made the perfect start, and is just managing to maintain about four or five car lengths from the similar Van Diemen behind him of Chris Paul. Chris Paul, who came from Volkswagen racing. Nicky Potterton, who came from being a marshal. And there, 
we have George McAlpine in the very latest Van Diemen, the new car, you notice the much wider sort of side pods of the car. Way back there in, what is he, one, two, three, four, five, six place. Nice little battle going on behind, but we've lost one. Sadly, going very slowly there, Derek Keneally. And he has obviously looked at the gauges and seen some little problem. <laughs> Number 88 going extremely wide. Thomas Stevan in the Mondial there, but managing to keep it on the course. And going very wide indeed also, the leader, who was right out over the curves that time. And you can see Chris Paul is definitely quite a little bit uh, closer now in the Mullen Marine car. So Chris Paul coming down the hill, really trying everything he knows, and he knows a fair bit about Formula Ford racing, to try and close that gap. A little bit of a ding-dong going on there. It's got a bit agricultural for somebody in uh, Raynard there. I think it was Dennis Sheehan who was involved in that. So he's had uh, a pretty rocky day. We're moving ahead now to lap 12. No change out front, and indeed no change in third and fourth, except that Nicky Potterton has managed to move out a little bit ahead in the DHL car there. There he is now, coming into picture, and there's Noel Dunn, a comparative novice in Formula Ford racing, but a man with a very big future. Then we have now number 19 being pressurised, Mark McKenna being pressurised by George McAlpine and Henry O'Friel uh, indulging in a little spin there in his Van Diemen as Raymond Knox comes up to take advantage of that. But there's no advantage being taken by Chris Paul, his teammate, in his efforts to haul in Mark O'Connor for the lead. If anything now, he's pulled out an advantage and we must have missed a little mistake there from Chris Paul because he's dropped back a bit. Chris Paul, these cars not as uh, oversteery or as tail out as they used to be in Formula Ford, much more scientific machines now, all in board suspension, and once again Chris Paul really trying, locking up there, and if anything Noel Dunn is now putting on a counter attack, as indeed is George McAlpine there, number 15, at the tail of that field, all he's done for the entire race so far is look at the gearbox of Mark McKenna and he's beginning to get a bit frustrated. McKenna getting a little bit sideways there as he goes through the Yorkie S's and up the straight up to Dunlop Corner which is always a tricky one because it's completely blind as the drivers come into this. Down into first gear, four-speed box in the Formula Ford with the new Avon tires, different tire pad pattern. Meanwhile the leader first and second still hard at work and that's the gap between third and fourth, and third and fourth closer than ever. Fifth and sixth also having their private little duel, and probably enjoying every minute of it. Mark O'Connor then. Second place, Chris Paul. Third place, Nicky Potterton. And there is Noel Dunn, right as he has been throughout the race, just right behind him. Looking over the hill, the equally close battle there for fifth and sixth places. Number 19, always under pressure, Mark McKenna. And behind him, that new Van Diemen, which doesn't seem to be showing any advantage. That car really built for the new ZTEC 1800cc Ford engine. But of course in Ireland we're still racing with the 1600 uh, Formula Ford class. Last lap for O'Connor, who has dealt with the back markers. There's Chris Paul going through and the back marker number 22. Here's this battle for third place, still Nicky Potterton with Noel Dunn with great intentions to get onto that rostrum. O'Connor comes out of Bridgestone for the last time, up over the hill with a real smell of victory now. But look at this battle for third place, it's far from resolved. Noel Dunn trying down the outside as they come over the hill for the last time. It's going to be very difficult to do it there. The Swift uh, trying to get past this Van Diemen as it has been ever since it was overtaken in the early laps. Meanwhile, O'Connor comes over the hill at Dunlop for the last time. Down he goes, it's been a perfect race and victory is going to be his. But who's going to be third? Is it going to be Noel Dunn who tries down the inside? O'Connor takes it. Chris Paul is second. But third, Potterton going to hold on just about from Noel Dunn. 
and then the fourth and fifth place battle just the same as it was. So there is an excellent result for O'Connor in the Ford of Ireland 1600 Formula Ford race. And the local man from Nace gets the top honours in his local race. Marked by Formula Ford standards, that looked easy almost. Well, it wasn't that easy. I made sure I got off in front of Chris, because if I didn't, I knew I was going to be stuck behind him for the 15 laps. So I have to admit, I put 110% into the line start, and it worked right for me. Tried down the outside again in the telecom the first time, but you didn't quite get it. Chris, you won't be, you won't be unhappy with that. Ah, yes, yeah, a fair result. Uh, on the day, Mark was definitely that wee bit quicker. We got off the line and say, Mark, at the, the start, I put him behind. We were, I don't know, 20, 20 25 yards. And we remained that way lap after lap after lap. I made a small mistake up there, took it out to about 40, 50 yards. But I just couldn't pull a millimetre on him, and my mistakes let him away. But fair to Mark was the man on the day. Nicky, you said to me this morning that you weren't having a great year, but it's certainly turned up now. Well, it was great today. Started in fifth, got a good start. I was in fourth, and I got a nice move on Noel. Sent him a dummy, got in the inside, held third the whole way. Two leaders got away on me a bit, but I made up for it then. I tried to catch them, but I couldn't get any closer. They were both going very well. Good result for Nicky Potterton under immense pressure, but the man of the day is undoubtedly the local man, Mark O'Connor in his Mark Models Van Diemen. The DHL Formula Ford Festival at Mondello is one of the most important dates of the year for aspiring young racing drivers. Mark, nobody should know more about winning Formula Ford Festivals than yourself because uh, you won this event last year. Yes, I did. I had a great run here last year after young Dallas took George McAlpine out and meant that I had a 15 second lead by the end, which was great. Now, there's quite a lot of tactics uh, in the semi-finals, isn't there? Yes, there is. Basically, just use your head, stay clean, don't get involved. It's very easy to be tempted to be involved with other drivers, but at the end of the day, one great position is not going to make a huge difference. His arch rival all year has been the new Ford of Ireland champion, Chris Paul. We won our heat yesterday uh, against Mark Marchand, who's champion of brands uh, in England. Uh, very good competitor, gave me a tough old run. Uh, so I'm in the front row, I think I'm pole position for the semi-final today, but the conditions have changed greatly. It's very wet now, so different ball game. Have to be very careful, Hope get to the final and see what happens there. The Jamin Formula Ford, been driven by Mark Marchant, new car and indeed new name here to Mandela. Yes, that's right. Yes, all the way from England. Um, the Jamin Racing Car is built in Kent, and this year we've won the Champion of Brands Formula Ford 1600 Championship uh, with uh, quite a number of wins, nine wins in total from 12 races. And they say this is a tricky circuit to learn, yet uh, you seem to have mastered it very quickly. Yes, um, it's similar in a way to Brands. It's quite technical. You need good traction out of the slow corners. And the car seemed to work well from the start. Immediately on Thursday when we were testing, we were quick. And uh, well, as you saw yesterday, I pushed Chris Paul very hard in the heat. Um, perhaps could have gone for it a little bit more, but I think the idea was to get through to today, so I settled for second. And the rain today, I think, could work well for me. There have also been new faces in Ireland this year. I finished second in my first heat, which puts me second row in the semi-final on the outside. Um, as long as I get a good start, I think the wet will suit me, so if I can get away, I hope to be at least second, hopefully first. Every year Formula Ford turns up some new talent, and Adrian Pollock has definitely been one of the finds of this season. It's been a great first year. Yes. What have what, uh, been the highlights? Uh, the one at Kyrgyzstan in the middle of July is very close. And Got beaten Chris Paul, so it's quite, quite happy with that. Now, what about the festival? This is a hard nut to crack, isn't it? Well, I reckon we're going to win it, but it'll be making us through the first corner will be the problem. Adrian, who's looked after by his dad, Rob, himself a former racing driver, may not be one of the world's greatest talkers yet, but he certainly can drive. And Adrian Pollock and Mark O'Connor occupy the front row for the first Lions of Limerick semi-final. Adrian makes a beautiful start, heading down towards Coca-Cola Bend for the first time, number 49. There's the young man from the north of Ireland. In behind him, it's Mark O'Connor. 
and then we have Michael Duke there figuring well as the field thankfully successfully streamed through the first corner without any damage and that's a fairly rare thing in Formula Ford. Here we are moving ahead to lap four coming up to Dunlop and it's Adrian under extreme pressure now from Mark O'Connor and young Michael Duke. Remember he's only taking part in his first ever Formula A race so this is incredible. So Michael Duke number 77 there very strong indeed. So we've got two very young drivers and last year's Formula Ford festival winner there in the middle of them really finding it very very hard to get grip on these extremely greasy conditions and Duke uh, bidding for the outside trying to go right round the outside that's an amazing maneuver if he gets it and indeed he has as we see moving ahead now out to the back of the circuit so Michael Duke is up into second place and Mark O'Connor number nine there in the ACEC electric car back into third place so Michael Duke really beginning to pull away now from Mark O'Connor. This, of course, the semi-final, it's the top ten who get into the final, so it's very important to get a good position. But look at young Adrian Pollock in his second season. Well, really, he only did a half season last year. And then in the background, one of the first of the English contestants. But it's all Irish up front amongst these first three. Moving ahead to lap eight, and you can see now that Michael Duke is closing in on Adrian Pollock, putting big, big pressure on the Van Diemen driver. Michael Duke, incidentally, in a swift and then Mark O'Connor in the Van Diemen behind. It's these three well ahead now and battling it out and you can just see how slippery it is. That looked like smoke but I think it was probably just a bit of spray coming out from the back of Michael Duke's car. Certainly hasn't it affected it in a straight line as they come down into Coca-Cola and Duke is very late on the brakes this time. So Michael Duke now closing in inch by inch on young Adrian Pollock and can Pollock withstand this sort of pressure and Adrian Pollock and Michael Duke the least experienced of these three runners and I wonder if third place man Mark O'Connor is just sitting there wondering how long these uh, two young men can stay on the track but so far they've hardly put a wheel wrong so Adrian Pollock coming up now getting it very wide there to Yorkie Bend coming up to Dunlop and Michael Duke looking very threatening on the inside Duke going for the lead and I think he's got it yes Duke has it Adrian Pollock now going to fight back for second place but Duke is going to take this semi-final Duke wins it Adrian Pollock is in second place and that's the way it ended up and Mark O'Connor in third place the top English competitor Robert Dare Cole in fourth place and Gavin Willis another English driver in fifth the second Lions of Limerick semi-final and Chris Paul gets off the front row in fine style George McAlpine being a bit swamped by the pack as they go down into Coca-Cola for the first time and danger man Mark Marchand threw into second place the champion of brands there in the Jamin car threw into second place followed by Nicky Potterton as they stream out down the back but a beautiful start indeed by Chris Paul he's really made a break and he gets it very sideways there Marchand's looking strong in second place Nicky Potter in third Simon Woodside fourth then George McAlpine fifth in the Miller car but there's nobody to touch oh there is there Marchand is really closing in now I think they're in second place and a real battle going on for fourth number 18 just going through picture there in the rather ancient uh, Van Diemen Bill Griffin and you could expect him to be well up and he's trying down the inside with George McAlpine so Bill Griffin a former Crosley Challenge Cup winner there really having a ding dong in a very very outdated motor car. But Chris Paul, Mark Marchant, Nicky Potterton and Simon Woodside and these four have broken free. And here is the Battle Royal, number 44 there, that's uh, Noel Dunn in the middle of all that. And uh, almost wheel banging there, it's very close stuff, really good. There's Grand at number 20 just leading that little pack but uh, Henry O'Friel I'm afraid is going nowhere. Marchant, meanwhile, has closed in on the leader. Simon Woodside still there in fourth place as they come through picture. Number 15 there just going through. That's George McAlpine, and he's under very close attention from Noel Dunn. Meanwhile, up front, first, second, third, fourth, no change. The battle is for fifth. 
and what a battle it is. Noel Dunn on the right of your picture in the swift and going through on the inside. George McAlpine and the new Van Diemen. Ken Grandin's in there. Austin Kinsler is in there. But I think the man who came out best there is Mark McKenna, who really made up a good few places in that maneuver as they head down for Coca-Cola again. All battling for fourth and the top ten who will get into the final and very closely contested. Yellow flag, so they're not allowed to overtake at that point. And really, look at them, trying to find space on this very slippery track. And round goes George McAlpine. Hasn't hit anybody, but lost a lot of time. And his chances now of making the final are looking pretty slim. So, red flags. The race has stopped. It wasn't for that incident. It must have been for this. That's uh, John Murphy's car stranded in the middle of the track. So, a restart. And down they come into Coca-Cola for the second effort to try and get round cleanly. And it's a very tight bunch. Mark Grandin is damaged. Number 18, that's Bill Griffin. He's involved. There's cars off all over the place. Surely we're going to have another red flag situation. And Nicky Potterton's in there. Uh, number 18, that's Bill Griffin. Number 12, just looking up the program, that's uh, David Quinn, who gets away without any damage. But surely this race is definitely going to be stopped. We see it here in replay. They just all got in on top of each other. Nicky Potterton is the white car on the right of your screen. And uh, I'm afraid suspensions and everything going flying. So quite a few of those won't restart. Here we go again. Unfortunate for Chris Paul and very lucky indeed for George McAlpine because he gets back onto the front row of the grid. Third start then. George McAlpine on the right. Then Marchant uh, in there in third place. Then this time, thankfully, all through cleanly. And Merchant uh, by lap five, it's back to status quo. He's back in there with the battle. So you've got the champion of brands there in the white and black car battling with the, the Northern Ireland Formula 4 champion and indeed the Ford of Ireland Formula 4 champion Chris Paul in car number six. An absolute titanic battle it is too. Up they come to Dunlop. Merchant looking down the inside. And you've got to remember that this man and this car, indeed the Jamin, have never been to Mandela before. This is a very impressive performance. And he is right in the gearbox now, in the perfect position on the slipstream. But you really don't go around the outside. That's not a trick in the Mandela book, or is it? This is amazing stuff. He's driving right round the outside of our champion. Quite incredible. You see it again in replay. That is superb. And this really marks this man as an outstanding driver. So, moving again to lap 11. But Chris Paul never gives up. In the River Rock car, the Van Diemen, he's absolutely shadowing the little Jamin. And he looks like he's trying to get alongside this time on the last lap. And Paul tries one side and then the other. That was a hairy maneuver. Down he comes, he's trying to do a merchant there and go around the outside, but he's not being let. And Mark Merchant heading out into the countryside for the last time. He's looking pretty strong at this stage. Chris Paul dropped uh, about a car length there. It's very, very slippery indeed. Aerodynamics not just coming into it as much as a car with wings, uh, these Formula Fords. No wings, no aerodynamic devices whatsoever. So Merchant coming up to Dunlop for the last time. This is Chris Paul's last chance. Merchant's on the inside quite legitimately. I don't think he's going to do it. So they come down the hill to take the checker flag and Merchant wins the second semi-final from Chris Paul. And Noel Dunn heads the bunch, which was a long way behind. George McAlpine, Dennis Sheehan, and there certainly has been plenty of action in the semi-finals.
Now the survivors face the 20-lap DHL Formula Ford final. Mark Marchin, number 127, on pole position alongside him. That novice, Michael Duke, number 77. Then Chris Paul, number 6, on the second row. Another novice, Adrian Pollock, number 49, alongside him. On the third row, Noel Dunn, who had a pretty fraught uh, semi-final. And alongside him, Mark O'Connor, a bit disappointed to be that far back. Then George McAlpine, and then Robert Darko, another of our English visitors. So, uh, off we go, and a good clean start by Michael Duke, a beautiful start, and look at Adrian Pollock, Merchant makes a very bad start indeed, he drops down into third place, and Pollock challenging on the outside, surely he shouldn't be out there, it's pretty greasy stuff out there, and somebody going off onto the grass, two drivers in fact, that's Gavin Wills number one, and Robert Dercall number five, so the two English visitors not doing at all well in the first corner, meanwhile Michael Duke has made a beautiful Beautiful break now, cool it! And he nearly loses it there on the entry into Budweiser that time. In second place, shadowing him is uh, Adrian Pollock, and then the whole field tippy toes through, and it really is slippery out there. Number one, that's Gavin Willis, who's got going again, but right at the back of the field. Meanwhile, we skip ahead and look at Duke, he's got a beautiful lead. So Duke coming up into Dunlop for the first time with a nice lead. Adrian Pollock in second place, then Marchant, and then we have Mark O'Connor and then it looked like Chris Paul on the inside as they go round and trying to find a dry line or a less slippery line there really isn't a dry line at the moment and particularly for the novices here at uh, Mandelo Park and indeed there's one of them that's Riley who incidentally is the current uh, 1600 European champion uh, Pollock looked uh, very wide there as he went in that time and he's really going to have to be careful he's uh, on the absolute ragged edge and his inexperience beginning to show just a little bit and there are our two friends from England who are waltzing at Mandelo and taking each other off dear me Meanwhile, Michael Duke, still out front, still Adrian Pollock in a rather tentative second place. And we've Merchant's lost a place. He's uh, dropping down, and that's Chris Paul uh, trying to go up the inside of him there. But Michael Duke really is mastering this at the moment in the Swift. In second place, two Van Diemen, second and third. There's um, O'Connor in third place. And look at this battle for fourth. Tremendous stuff. Merchant on the outside there, and Chris Paul number six. Uh, better positioned as they come up the hill this time for Dunlop. We're looking behind for this battle and Chris Paul on the inside, Merchant on the outside and just behind him Noel Dunn and really there is no spare space there whatsoever. Down they come, down the main straight, heading up to about 120 miles an hour before they have to break early in these conditions. And there is Michael Juke Juice doing it perfectly. Not so Adrian Pollock, who goes off, loses second place. So this battle is now promoted to third, and promoted to third is Merchant. Merchant is back up there, and 30 goes off. That's uh, another English visitor, Michael Graham from Bristol. So the visitor's not having a good day. And Noel Dunn not having a good day as he spins down at Budweiser. Chris Paul getting through. And we see Simon Woodside coming up in amongst this bunch. Another person off. That's Derek Keneally, number three in the Swift. And it really is getting impossibly slippery down there, that part of the course. But mastering it all, skipping ahead, 16 laps. There's first and second. Now, Mark O'Connor up into second, but he really is quite a distance behind our leader, number 77, Michael Duke. And Michael Duke has kept such a cool head. Don't worry about number 12. He's one of the back markers, David Quinn, as indeed is that car. There is second place man now, Mark O'Connor, number nine, and the Mark Models, Van Diemen and just getting a little tail slide as he puts down the power out of that corner. Third place, we still have Adrian Pollock. Fourth is Noel Dunn. And then a long, long gap before fifth comes into picture, and that's Simon Woodside, number 67 there, in the Mondial, the Irish-built motor car. So, and more fun, and that's Chris Paul, our champion, who's having a terrible final. Really one of the favorites for the event, right out of it. So Michael Duke from Portadown about to start his last lap and can this young man keep a cool head for just one more circuit of Mondello? That's all he has to do to take the biggest victory of his life. Danny goes into Coca-Cola, comes from quite a racing family. His father used to do quite a bit of auto testing and rallying 
and his brother uh, Peter is the current former junior, our, our Formula 4 junior champion in England. So Michael Duke, who trained in karts as many young people do nowadays, coming down into this double apex corner where so many people have fallen foul of the conditions uh, this afternoon, but negotiating it very successfully. And I don't know what that steam coming out of the car. We noticed that in the semi-final. I don't think it should be there, but obviously it's not doing too much harm as he's totally dominated this race, coming up to lap number 31 on his very last lap, about two corners to go now. He can afford to take his time because Mark O'Connor is a good distance back in second place, getting the blue flag, the driver being warned of the faster car coming. So Duke crests the hill to Dunlop Corner for the last time, a fairly conservative line. He's got plenty of time in his hands. The checkered flag will be in sight now for the greatest victory of his young life. There he goes, Michael Duke taking the checkered flag, the DHL Formula Ford Festival, an excellent win. And look at those four young names, Duke Pollock, Dunn and Woodside in the top five, auguring very, very well indeed for the future. So Michael Duke takes all the spoils in the DHL, Lions of Limerick and Motoring News Formula Ford Festival, a result that this A-race novice could surely not even have dreamt of before the weekend. Michael, it's got to be the biggest win of your life so far. Well, it definitely was. Now, there's no comparison with, with the win today. That's the first A-race that I've had, and I was looking forward to it, and I prayed for rain, as I said earlier, and it came, so, and it all helped. Well, in your wildest dreams, did you think you would be the Formula Ford Festival champion here today? Well, I always hoped and dreamt, but I never thought it would, it would happen, you know, and it came right in the day. And what a busy day, because, of course, you also did the Formula Opel race. Yeah, it, it was the uh, first race of the year in it, uh, obviously the last one this year, but I wanted to try it just in case I moved on next year into it and see what happens. And? Oh, you wouldn't know. Don't know yet. <laughs> All in the funds. <laughs>